Would a mason recognize the handshakes and other symbols in the temple? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, uh, welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining with us. Last time we got to meet Karen, and today we get to meet her husband, Greg. Nice, oh, to, nice to be here, Nice Earl. to meet you and have you come and share your story. Thank you. It's really a fascinating journey that you've been on. <laughs> yeah. Um, to me, I thought that was normal, but uh, later in life I found out it was a little bit different. A little different. Yeah. Where were you born? I was born in Casper, Wyoming. Really? In 1963. Okay. And uh, then moved as a uh, three or four year old, we moved to uh, California, Central oh. California. Uh, excuse me. Kent, Central, Central California. California. Okay. And so I went <clears throat> to school there in you know, my early years. And yeah. then my dad worked for a newspaper company. And so we oh. were transferred out there from Wyoming. To, to California. And then he, he was transferred from there to Provo, Utah. In oh, to Provo. 19, I think we came in 1974 or somewhere around there. And were they LDS? No. Oh, they weren't? No, actually when we uh, first moved... Um, you know, from California was quite strange. From Wyoming to California, I was a little kid with the crew cut and cowboy boots. And yeah. this is 1966. <laughs> and Vietnam War was going on, full yeah. battle. And, yeah. and the area where we moved to, I was um, a little, I, I stood out a little bit. Number <laughs> one, I was a, a, a minority in, in, the, in the school system. Oh. And I looked real funny because of, of you know the crew cut and, and the cowboy boots. So I was picked on quite a bit and uh, oh, yeah. learned I had to you know hold my own. Stand up for yourself. Huh? So then we were transferred <clears throat> to Provo. Um, How'd you I fit thought, in there? Oh, when I first saw those mountains, I thought, oh, <clears throat> how beautiful! This is going to be awesome. Yeah. And and, uh, and I was looking around in the neighborhood, and it was like, um, I don't think I'm going to have racial problems here. No, no. Um, <laughs> a little different, I guess. So, yeah, it was a little different. But, so religious-wise, uh, you're saying your folks weren't LDS? Were no. they active in a, a church? Uh, my mother was active in a Baptist uh, faith, oh, okay. and my father was uh, agnostic. Hmm. So um, as children, we went with my mother to church on Sunday. Even here in Provo? Yeah, in, we did. Well, in Provo. It, as soon as we found a Baptist church to go to, we started attending them. Oh really? Uh, I, I went there till I was about twelve, okay. and um, <clears throat> and then I kind of fell out of that um, because of some situations that happened um, when I first came to Provo. Uh, I remember going to school for the first time. We got on a bus and went to a school, and uh, after school. You know, instead of coming home, we went on a bus and we went to this other place, um, which I thought was part of school, and had a big, you know, steeple on it, and and, uh, oh. and it said, you know, the you know Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. I didn't know what that was, but I figured this is part of school, and we went in, and and after that, I came home and uh, I asked my mother. How come I, you, you, you know, the California school system must be really lacking because I'd never heard of these presidents that they were talking about, you know. Oh, my goodness. And, um, They're taking you to a they church? They're taking me to, to uh, primary. primary, and I didn't know what that, that was. Because that used to be during the week. Yeah. Oh, and my so goodness. so my mom asked me, where did they take you? And I showed her, and she says, well, that's the... Mormon church and we don't go there and I said oh okay did you know you didn't know what a Mormon I didn't was, know what or? it was so the next time the next week when we, they were going there I said no uh, <laughs> I'm not going they said well aren't, uh, aren't you LDS and I said no I don't do that stuff that'll fry your brain because I'm coming from California in the 60s you know it was, I, thought it was LSD, I got a little yeah. mixed up there yeah so but yeah. your mom was did she say anything about what a Mormon is, or no? She, she did? didn't really know either. Oh, okay. Um, in the area we grew up, even Baptists were kind of few and far between. It was mostly Catholicism yeah. that was in that area. So, oh, okay. So um, at that point, my relationship with my schoolmates changed because when they found, when out they found I wasn't LDS, oh. and so I was literally at, at school lunch. 
I would sit at a table by myself and everybody else oh. would sit over there and, you know, make little smirks and stuff. And I thought, boy, this is California all over again. <laughs> I am getting, you know, it, it, but it's not about racial this time. It's over religion. Oh. And, and so, um, you know, they'd come over and, and because of strength in numbers and I was singled out, they tried that picking on me again. Of course, that didn't work very good for them because I had already had lots of experience <laughs> in, in, in standing up for yourself, standing yeah. up for myself, yeah. and so. Um, oh, that's interesting. So, yeah, that was that didn't turn out <clears> so good. So I didn't have a real good uh, disposition of of LDS or Mormons because I didn't think they behaved well. Yeah, I don't. I didn't believe that Doesn't they practiced like what they preached yeah. they, in those days. Yeah. And, you know, at this time, I we only lived about six blocks from the Provo Temple, and oh so, you know, um, <laughs> and I used to call it the giant thumbtack for some reason. I don't know why, but <laughs> kind of an upside down. Yeah, upside down thumbtack, <laughs> That's funny. I hadn't yeah. heard that one. Yeah. So you go on to high school, I guess, and go you're on still high in. School, uh, and at that time, uh, I'm I'm feel like I'm pushing the other way. You know, I'm I'm feeling uh, I was uh, I played football and 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 I was accepted as long as I was playing sports. No, oh. because I was good at sports. You yeah. know, and I was really gung ho with sports, and um, but I was just didn't fit in. I um, other than school, uh, you know, in the halls and stuff like that. So I kind of started hanging around the rougher neck kids, you know, because oh. I at least accepted by that. You know, yeah, and being lonely is it, it's not fun, <laughs> and. Um, I was a junior in high school, and I met a wonderful lady, a um, wonderful girl that um, didn't care at that time that I was not LDS, and we had went on a field trip, and we got along really well. That was Karen. Yeah, it was Karen. Yeah. Yeah. That's special. Yeah. You got along well, but what happened? Well, we we got along great, <laughs> and uh, but I wasn't LDS. I wasn't going to join the LDS church, and... Um, uh, I was a return missionary, right? And so I didn't fit the mold that her her dad had set for her, and so um, she ended up marrying a person that she okay. thought was that in that yeah. mold. Yeah. So you go on in life, I guess, and what what goes well, on? Yeah. After high school, I um, I because of the way I was. Felt like I was uh, treated. I um, I rebelled. Um, so I uh, always was working. I took pipeline jobs and, and really high paying but rough, rough yeah. jobs, uh, oil drilling and that kind of stuff. And uh, kind of back in Wyoming was, or North yeah, Dakota. Yeah, I kind of traveled all over. I traveled you? all over the country. You know. Yeah. Um, doing religion, this kind of work, but religion it, probably wasn't much of religion your life. wasn't involved with that at all. Matter yeah. of fact, it was probably anti-religion, if any. And, sure. Um, so I fell in a deep hole, and it took about twenty-five years of that um, of abusing myself with drugs and alcohol, and um, being around roughnecks and bikers and you name it, and I <laughs> was around it. Um, and getting in scraps and uh, you know some of them were very serious the injuries that I you know yeah. that I received but um, it came to a point in my life where I uh, I didn't think I was good enough because growing up at 12 years old I thought if I wasn't good I wasn't going to make it to, to heaven you really thought that? I really thought that. <clears throat> That's interesting. And so, if you're not going to go, make the best of it, you know? <laughs> Here. Here. <laughs> and so, I I was really unaware of what God's love really is. But was it ever, was it still in the back of your mind all those there 25 so or so years? There were so many times that I heard that, that um, there was prompting really? to me that I just passed it by. I mean, I should be dead. I should be dead. And there was de decisions that were made not by my thoughts, but by promptings to me to maybe take a right instead of a left that maybe have saved my life. Really? You know, in, in, 
you know, lots of times like that. And um, I ended up um, feeling so uh, desperate. And I call that the gift of desperation now. <laughs> and I, I, I actually received the gift of de desperation. Um, I ended up so low in my life. Uh, I, was, I was in California, it was Los Angeles, California. <laughs> and I attempted a suicide. Um, it failed, obviously. But I jumped off a bridge and um, which should have killed me. But and you just felt at the end of you just the end of it. I was just I, I, I just wanted it over. I, I felt like it was just the life was such a struggle that it was just too hard anymore. Gosh. And so it was it was uh, an attempt. You think people or people out there perhaps that relate to that Absolutely. that are they're kind Absolutely. of losing their way and matter of fact, I've met hundreds of them. Have you? And. One of the things that I try to do in my life today is reach out to those that have uh, that kind feel of that that kind of hurt, hurt and pain yeah. and loneliness. That it doesn't doesn't have to stay that way. Yeah, there's people like me that love them and understand them, and and uh, oh, good for you. There's there's a lot of us too. Are there? There's a lot of us. I hope they're listening, and I hope they're gonna I get some you. hope out of this. So what happens when you go over the bridge? So I Did go you... over the bridge and they take me to the hospital. Is this into water? Or... It was actually uh, into some rocks on up here. Oh, gosh. And um, so I was taken to the hospital. And, of course, after they're, you know, at that time I was super intoxicated. I tried to, I tried to kill myself with alcohol and, and pills, and that didn't work. So I jumped off the bridge, and so I was just—I wanted. I, you were I aware that you. Over. Yeah. You were aware of that. Oh. And so, um, when they asked me, "Did you attempt suicide?" I said yes, and they put me in a, in a psych ward in sure. there, and they held me there, and I tried to, you know, to, to con my way out of there. I, I, you know, went to the psychiatrist and they said, oh, I wasn't trying to kill myself, you know. He says, oh, good, why don't you spend about three weeks with us until you can get honest. And oh. uh, after that, I realized that at that time, I thought it was alcohol and was my problem. Yeah. And that I was alcoholic. And uh, so I voluntarily went to a sober living environment slash rehab in Northern California. Mm. And um, that was where the the journey began from the des the the gift of desperation. Um, you were at your lowest again. At my lowest point. Yeah. And I went into this place that had it was a men's facility only. Some of them were had been convicted bank robbers from San Quentin. One had been there who had uh, attempted murder. And these men were pretty rough guys, and they were in there. And I thought, and but I wasn't intimidated by that because I was that that was my comfort zone being around those kind of people, you know. Um, I, I, I could get used to that, um, but I couldn't stand being by, with myself. I couldn't couldn't stand what was inside of me, and um, so March twenty eighth, two thousand nine. At two o'clock in the morning, I was off the back balcony in the redwoods, and I could hear the ocean because we were a mile away from the ocean. And I'm looking at these giant redwoods in a full moon, and I said, "If there's a God, then I need to talk to Him." And I hit my knees, and I asked, "God, please help me have one night of sleep. I just want one night of sleep, of peace." You just in such turmoil, huh? And um, he granted that to me. So I said, well, I'm going to pray again. And I asked God, I, and I thanked him, and that's one of the things that I do, is I thank God every day. Yeah. I don't think we do that enough. <laughs> um, and I thanked him, and I asked for his will, not mine. What will you have me do? Yeah. And I will follow. Thank you for that gift you gave me. And um, 
the gifts just keep coming. That's all he wants, isn't it? He just wants our heart. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. He wanted me to surrender. Yeah. And um, it felt like when I when I said, "My, your will, not mine." It felt like every everything I had held in my life had been lifted off my shoulders. Is that right? I was free. <laughs> and then came promises that he'd made to me. Yeah. And he asked me if I would do certain things, and they were simple things like stay here and follow the orders of these people. And if you can do that, I'm going to promise you serenity. Hmm. And that's the biggest gift that I've ever wanted was serenity. <laughs> Little did you know what was coming down the road. I had no the road. idea how. <laughs> um, I spent three years at that facility. After I oh, completed really? it, I stayed on for three years as a counselor there. Oh, you did? And, helping uh, others, huh? Helping others. I've um, about 170 men that I sponsored uh, throughout the years of... Um, alcohol and drug addiction and all other addictions and wow. um, all since 2009 since 2009 so wow. this has uh, been my 10 years and uh, <laughs> in that in along that journey um, it was about being a servant giving instead yeah. of taking yeah accepting people you may not like what what they do, but accept them for who they are, love them for who they are, and try to be an example that Christ was an example to us, and try to be Christ-like, yeah. be an example, so people, you're not forcing people to do what they want, don't want to do, but if you can show them a calmer way and a more peace, they'll want to know what you know. Yeah. Well, I know I had all these rules I had to live or felt like I was supposed to live. Mm -hmm. And the freedom that you're talking about is something that I felt almost physical off yeah. me and having that freedom and liberty in, in Jesus. And yeah. and you looking back now, I guess you see times when Jesus has been... Oh, yeah. like you, Jesus you was with saying, me at my lowest point. I didn't yeah. have to work to get him. He was there. Yeah, isn't that an interesting... We don't... Mm -hmm. we don't I mean, Mormons have this, I've got to be worthy... To go to the temple and to to be accepted, but God actually they're meets worthy us. before that. Yeah, I mean God takes you, you us as we are. You can't build your way to heaven. The no, Tower of Babel was a good example of that. Yeah. Um, so these people that you're helping, do they come to this? I mean, are they also eventually get to a low point? Oh, um, yeah, and sometimes they get to low points or family members of them of theirs get to low points or some of them are just my neighbors that have the the step for wives look really? in our yeah. neighborhood and then come to my door and say I'm really struggling with this and and because they know you understand because they know that they there. can trust me yeah and and that I will uh, for one thing, their 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 life and what they say to me, I don't broadcast. Well, that's one of the things I also feel like I gave up was being judgmental. Mm -hmm. You know, judging people, accepting them for who they are, knowing that God loves them the way they are, although He'd like them to love Him more, I guess, yeah. and do. Do do as well as they can, but uh, not to be judging. That's yeah, a big thing. It's, it's it's amazing when you know yeah. that Christ has already done the work for us. Yeah, He's already paid the the penance for us, and all He wants for us to have is serenity, love, yeah. and love Him, love ourselves, and love our neighbor. Did you uh, the Bible? Did that change at all for you? Uh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Had you read it much before? You know, I, I read it and I knew stories as a child and yeah. stuff. But um, as we held the callings in, in I, I converted. Yeah. And and I converted because I found my wife there, and I thought I'm not going to let her go this time. <laughs> 
and I actually asked God, "What is this going to be okay?" And and uh, he just said, "Just keep moving forward, yeah. and you'll see. Do my, do my work, not yours." <laughs> and and to be honest with you, I think it was a great thing because um, I've got to meet some great people yeah. that are really confused, <laughs> and and um, and if you're out there <laughs> and you're not sure. Pick up the Bible. I mean, um, the missionaries asked me to invest, investigate the Book of Mormon, and I and I encourage, if you're uh, questioning the Mormons, to investigate the Bible. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's in the first book of your quad, <laughs> and maybe there's a reason for that. <laughs> I noticed you brought the Bible here. Your mom, actually, she must be thrilled because she was Christian that you've made this journey and, oh, yeah. and come to this. But she gave you the Bible. and Yeah, she gave me this Bible. It was, uh, this was issued in 1956. <laughs> so uh, it's pretty special. Yeah. yeah. She gave this to my wife and I for Christmas. Well, I appreciate your story so much. We're going to get you and your dear wife together here in a minute and uh, have the have you share a little more of your story and but I appreciate your time and anything you'd like to say to your family friends um, I would I'd like to say to my family and my neighbors that I love you God loves you and if I don't come across convincing it's because you're in denial <laughs> and uh, I just want you to come walk with God along with the rest of us and God be with you it's his will not ours perfect thanks for joining us we'll see you next time <laughs>